All right, we're going to take a look at uh, question. It was actually three. It was, it was five in the AP exam that was given in. But question number three from the motion problems. Uh, we'll look at 3A, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, so 3A, we've got particles moving along the axis. Uh, you can see here the position of particle P is given by this uh, position. So it's like an X position at a certain time. Put in a time, it gives you back the number on the X axis that its location is at. Uh, they give us a velocity for this other particle. And they tell us, and this is really important, they tell us the initial position. Uh, it starts out at position 5 when t is equal to 0. So number one, we want to know when particle p is moving to the left. Okay. Uh, if you think about moving backwards and forwards, you're talking about positive velocity and negative velocity. So we just need to figure out p's velocity. Uh, for p's velocity, uh, I'm going to call that v sub p. Uh, we're just going to take the derivative of that p function. OK, um, and that's a, a natural log function. So uh, it's going to be the reciprocal. So you're going to have t squared minus 2t plus 10. And you have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So 2t minus 2. OK, remember, when something's moving forward and it switches to going backwards, or when it goes backwards and switches to moving forwards, you're going from a positive to a negative or negative to a positive. Those changing points are going to happen when the velocity is 0. OK, that's where it might change directions. So let's figure out uh, where the velocity is 0. Of course, a fraction is equal to 0 when the numerator is equal to 0. That's going to be t equals 1. OK, so I'm going to make a little number line here. Uh, we need to know when it has a negative velocity. So uh, I'm going to look at t, and I'm going to look at uh, my velocity sign. And uh, we should just be able to substitute in here. So. Uh, here's here's one, and I'm just going to do a little number line here. Um, if you pick zero, if you substitute zero into this velocity equation, you get a negative on top, you get a positive on the bottom. Uh, that's going to be a negative velocity. So we have a negative velocity. That means it is moving to the left. Okay. Um, now it could move to the left. Stop velocity of zero here at one, and then it could continue moving to the left. So we do need to check to the other side of one. And uh, you can see here, so if I check like two, if I put two in here, I get a positive. If I put it in two down here, we'll also get a positive. That is a positive velocity. So it's got a negative velocity coming up to one. Um, by the way, uh, you do have to be careful here. They ask you for the interval. Um, I think they ask you for the interval between uh, zero and eight. So the it is moving to the left for values of t uh, equal to zero, because it's got a negative velocity all the way to infinity up to one. And then the velocity is zero and one. So um, that's that's pretty simple. Negative velocities and the break points between positives and negatives happen when the velocity is zero. So uh, that's really the key for part A.